about the relationship between God and me personally. We're talking about the spiritual parental relationship. God is our spiritual father. So just knowing about him, just believing him in him in some objective way is not good enough. So the Bible compels us to become followers, not just believers, but followers of Jesus Christ. So how can we become followers of Jesus Christ? It takes two steps. Number one, deny yourself. Number two, take up your cross. Let's talk about the first part here. In order for us to become followers of Jesus Christ, we have to first deny ourselves. And there are many, many different ways that we can apply that to our personal lives. But generally speaking, I want to focus on three different things. Number one, education. We have to deny our education in the sense that we have to put it behind the Bible. I'm sure you understand that I'm not talking about don't study, don't get good grades, don't go to, don't go to good college. I'm not talking about that at all. Matter of fact, because we have to understand the Bible, we have to study mathematics, sociology, history, science, all different subjects. Study as hard as you can. Have all the, all the knowledge as you can. But do not put those academics, education, before the Bible. In that sense, the Bible is telling us to deny education or put it behind the Bible. Because as you study more and more of the school subjects, there will be contradictions between what you learn in school and what the Bible is telling us. I assure you, there will be contradictions. And then you'll have to make a choice. Do I believe in my school first? Or do I believe in the Bible, God's Word? See, here is where following Jesus Christ takes a personal level. We learn all we can in this world. But we have to become good students. But before that, we have to become good followers of Jesus Christ, doers of the Bible. In that sense, I say, deny your education. Put it behind the Bible. And success. You're young. You're full of enthusiasm about your future, and that's good. You should be. You have great dreams and specific goals for your lives. But more than anything else, we have to put the cross, meaning the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, before our success. And in that indirect way, I say, deny your success. Once again, please do understand me. I'm not saying you shouldn't be successful in this world. You should be. 
God wants to bless you. And God wants you to be successful in this world. But no matter what it is, no matter what your dream of becoming successful in this world is, you need to put it behind the cross. And only when you do that, put your dreams behind the cross. You can have both wonderful blessings of the cross as well as the blessing of success in this world. Now, many Christians are making mistakes doing this. They put the cross behind their success. They pray, they go to church, they live Christian life so they can become successful in this world. Like I said, it is going to happen both of that, but not in that order. We have to put cross first, and then the success of the world, our personal satisfaction and the wonderful happiness in our lives and our family come after the cross. So in that indirect sense, once again, the Bible is telling us to deny our success or put it behind the cross. One more thing, don't believe in yourself before God. Deny your abilities, or talents, or wisdom, or knowledge, or whatever you, have, you might have, that personal power of yours in this world. Put it behind trusting in God. I mean, if you think about that, if you think about some greatest people in this world ever lived in the history of humankind, they all had their limitations and their abilities. Maybe they were really smart, maybe they were really rich, maybe they were really powerful. But no matter what they had in their abilities, there was that limitation. And as long as we understand the finiteness, you know, that limitness of human person, that we come to trust in God and put God first before ourselves. And that's what the video was talking about you, you just saw about 10 minutes ago. Is it about you or is it about God? For many Christians, coming to church, crying, reading the Bible is all about them. It's all about me. I want to be happy. I want to be blessed. I want to be successful. Once again, God gives you all those blessings, but the purpose or, or the order should be reversed. We come to church to worship unto God. We pray so we can have the relationship with God. We read and study the Bible so we can understand God's will, so we can obey. So this religion of Christianity is not about us. It's about God. And then God blesses us, and then we can have wonderful blessings that He promised throughout the Bible. See, these three things, deny your abilities, put your trust in God, deny success, put it behind the cross, deny even education, in the sense that we put it behind the Bible, is how we should deny ourselves. What about take up his cross daily? This is a meaningful phrase here. Take up your cross daily. Now, it means your cross is different from someone else. Even if you live in the same family, your cross is different, different from your mom's or dad's. You have your own cross that you need to take, and you need to take it every day, daily. I have some examples here. We need to repent every day. I know you pray every day, but do you repent every day? You know, perhaps when you go to sleep at night, you think about the past day, all the people you met, all the things you've said, or even all the thoughts you had in your mind. And you realize there's some thoughts, some words, some actions you, sh you shouldn't have taken. 
You think about those and you say it in your prayer. You repent. And this, you have to do it on your own. And this, you have to do every day. Because we're not so perfect, we make mistakes every day. Maybe not so visible. Maybe no one else has notices it. But we know that we're making mistakes in our thinking or in our actions without knowing. So taking up our cross every day first means we need to repent our prayers every day. No one can do this for you. Not your parents, not your pastor. You have to pray and repent on your own every day. What about sacrifice? You have to make sacrifices every day. I love this little book, The Giving Tree. Throughout his life, this tree keeps on giving and giving and giving, making sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice. So that's what Jesus did throughout his lifetime until he died on the cross to make that ultimate sacrifice. We, Christians, followers of Christ, must do the same. I mean, it doesn't have to be so grand as to dying for someone, but it can be a little thing, but meaningful thing as yielding, giving, sharing, helping others. See, those are the little sacrifices that we have to make every day. So not only you say the prayer of repentance when you go to sleep, Every night you should think about this. Have I made any sacrifice today throughout the day? Did I, did I yield to anyone today? Did I give anything to someone who, who, who was in need? Did I share anything with anyone? Did I help any other people? Every night before we go to sleep, we have to think about that. Whether we made the fruit of sacrifice for that day. So this challenge, the Bible calls it as carrying up our cross every day. And this is the way that we make, we bear fruits out of our sacrifice. And lastly, taking up the cross every day, carrying the cross every day, means that we have to carry the gospel of the cross in evangelism. In evangelism. Once again, you don't have to go out to the public street and use the microphone or megaphone to scream out people. Come to church, believe in God, otherwise you go to hell. You don't have to do that anymore. But in some silent ways, we should evangelize. Just the way that we relate to other people, the way we talk. The way we are being so caring and loving to other people who are in need. So those are the ways that we can indirectly evangelize our neighbors and friends. We don't even have to say, come to church with us. The better way is they're so touched by our love and caring. They volunteer themselves to come to church with us. You're so nice and good. You're such a good person, and you believe in God, I want to believe in God too. You go to church and pray and praise, maybe I want to try that too, so I can become a good person like you. So the, this is the, the wonderful way that we can evangelize our neighbors and friends, and perhaps some family relatives who don't believe in God just yet. But definitely, this is the ultimate way that we have to carry the gospel of the cross. So let me ask you once again, are you a believer or are you a follower? Do you just believe in God objectively from the Bible as one of the religions? Or do you truly believe in Jesus Christ and you want to establish that personal relationship with God? Are you a believer or are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Do you deny yourself? 
Do you carry your cross daily? Are you a follower? Think about that. Let us take a moment to pray. Father God, we thank you for leading us to church on this Sunday morning. We thank you for your blessings and words, and we thank you for your presence and our pray prayers and praise. We've been going to church for a long time, and yet perhaps we've been just believers. We knew about God from the Bible. Objectively, we made the decision to believe in Christianity as one of the religions in this world. But perhaps, we did not have any relationship with you. We truly didn't follow Jesus Christ in denying ourselves and taking up the cross. Lord, we pray to become followers of Jesus Christ. We want to take up the cross daily in making those sacrifices, sharing the gospel of the Lord, and helping those who are in need. Help us to become followers by following your footsteps all the way to the cross. And help us to truly deny ourselves, putting everything and everyone behind you, so we can become true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time and we pray that we can share this love to all our loved ones and our neighbors and friends and family. So that way we can come together as a corporate blessing to you as we are blessed by you. Once again, we thank you for your message and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.